Hello everyone, hope all is well. So here I am, no, not a lawyer, just a Canadian citizen that cares about his civil liberties. That drives me to the Canadian Justice Laws website. I was informed of this Statutory Instruments Act created in 1985. So I'm going to review this act with the intention of answering the following question. Can our government legally override our civil liberties? My answer as a Canadian citizen is absolutely not. And I intend to review this Statutory Instruments Act with you to prove that my answer is accurate. Let's scroll down here to section three that says examination of proposed regulations. And let's start by covering this. Regulations, best as I can understand, are the lowest form of law, much like provincial bylaws. These would be the lowest forms of law. The Canadian Bill of Rights, for example, is the highest form of law, best to my understanding. It has royal ascension. Going back to this, I want us to understand the context. This is an examination, a good look at proposed regulations. Not actual regulations, but proposals of regulations. Let's start here, section one of section three. Subject to any regulations made pursuant to paragraph 20A, where a regulation-making authority proposes to make a regulation. So let's keep this in context. There's a regulation-making authority, but they simply propose the regulation. I just want to keep in context that they don't get to just make regulations. They get to put forth a proposal of the regulation. And these regulation-making authorities, they shall cause to be forwarded to the clerk of the Privy Council three copies of the proposed regulation in both official languages. Let's continue in Section 2 of Section 3. On receipt by the clerk of the Privy Council of copies of a proposed regulation pursuant to subsection 1, the clerk of the Privy Council, in consultation with the Deputy Minister of Justice, these two entities right here, the Privy Council and the Deputy Minister together, shall examine, shall take a good strong look at the proposed regulation. They're going to take a good look at this proposal, this regulation suggestion. And why are they going to do that? Well, they're going to ensure something. What is it that the Privy Council and the Deputy Minister will ensure us of? They will make sure that this proposed regulation does not trespass. I repeat, does not trespass on existing rights and freedoms and is not, I repeat, and is not this proposed regulation, they need to make sure that it is not in any case inconsistent with the purposes and provisions of the Canadian Bill of Rights. So as an overview, what do we have here? Well, we have an authority that gets to propose and or suggest a regulation. And then they need to hand it off to the clerk of the Privy Council. Once they've received this suggestion, the clerk of the Privy Council, along with the Deputy Minister of Justice, their job is to make sure to examine this regulation and to make sure that it does not override our Canadian Bill of Rights, that this proposed regulation does not trespass our existing rights and freedoms, and that it does not in any case become inconsistent or in conflict with the purposes and the provisions of our Canadian Bill of Rights. So, 
Can the government create regulations that override our civil liberties? Answer, absolutely not. In fact, it would appear to me that they even have in place this Privy Council and the Deputy Minister, their job is to make sure that that does not happen. You will note that I'm skipping the Canadian Charter. Yes, it applies to the Charter, but I don't invoke the Charter. And if you're curious about that, please do go to my YouTube channel, or if you're on my Facebook, go to the Dirty Charter Secret video, a little less than 10 minutes long, and around 10 minutes long is the Charter Escape. Start with the Dirty Charter Secret. Real quick, bottom line is, Section 1 is a problem in the Charter. It sets reasonable limits. This is a totalitarian style of rights and freedoms document, okay? Because who gets to put the reasonable limits? Them. Who gets to determine what those limits are? Them. And if they're justified, it's according to them. And then you got to argue with them that it wasn't, which is guilty till proven innocent. The Canadian Bill of Rights is the opposite. It's the opposite because there's a due process of law. Okay, and we have protection of the law. So you have your rights, and if someone has a problem, you get to continue. You have a right to not be deprived of that right except by due process of law, which means I'm innocent until proven guilty. And then the onus is on them to somehow convince a judge that when I had, you know, seven people over for a barbecue, I was somehow breaking the criminal code, okay? So that's why you wanna invoke the Bill of Rights because there's no argument. I don't even need a lawyer to show up with the Bill of Rights. But you pull in the charter, all of a sudden, here we go, we have a debate. Was it reasonable or was it not? Was the limit proper or was it too much? Was it justified or not? And if so, when do I get my day in court? Because so far I'm guilty until I can prove that you were wrong. Why should I prove that they were wrong? No, 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 no. I'm going to have my rights and you guys, you can try to prove that I was wrong because I decided to have Thanksgiving dinner with my mom and my dad. Okay? Warning, sarcasm, and sassy alert. But back to a final say on this Statutory Instruments Act. I believe this further proves in Section 3, I'm going to remind you here, just for convenience, Section 3 and Section 2C of Section 3 proves that our government cannot legally override our civil liberties, period. I hope this gives you confidence that the laws are on our side, and I hope this has been edifying for you. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Grace and peace.